So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to do a talk about David Amos. Now, why do I want to do a talk about David Amos? The Tory MP who was tragically killed by an Islamist a few weeks ago. And yet, as quickly as anything, the political machine wanted to distort and distract the public discourse away from the cause of this terrorist attack, which is the Islamist ideology that led to his stabbing. With the politicians started to talk about, they started to talk about um, how we need to have nicer social media discourse, how we needed to talk about politicians in a nice way. Nobody, apart from GB News, was willing to talk about the fact that an Islamist terrorist killed a representative of a liberal democracy. And we need to ask the question, why? Why are our political class, why are our media afraid to talk about the problem of Islamist supremacist ideology. I want to offer to you the possibility that our political class is afraid. They are scared. They don't know how to handle the problem of Islamic terrorism and so instead they wish to sweep it under the rug as quickly as possible and hide it from public view. And rather than dealing with the actual problem, they want to deal with other problems that are not actually the cause of the incident involved. Why is our political class afraid to tackle Islamic terrorism head on and hard? Why are they afraid to smash this movement with the brute force and determination necessary to crush the Islamist movement that is being pushed and propagated within a significant minority of the Muslim community. I'll tell you why. Because they believe that if they do, that more Muslims will side with the radicals than side against them. They believe that if they come down hard on Islamic radicals, that more Muslims will side with the Islamic radicals. And so, when an MP of the British Parliament was murdered by an Islamic terrorist, they instead decided to talk about nicer politics. They instead decided to talk about removing anonymity from social media accounts. They instead decided to talk about not using harsh language on social media. Ladies and gentlemen, we must accept that our political class, our politicians, our media anchors and their acolytes and the sheeple that follow them are governed by fear. Their politics is governed by fear about what they can do and they feel powerless. And because they feel powerless, they tackle every problem bar the problem that they should be tackling, which is Islamic radicalism and Islamic terrorism. What is the answer? 
to the weakness of liberal pluralism and liberal weakness, liberal progressives. Can I get a drink of water, please? The answer, ladies and gentlemen, is not to double down on liberalism, not to double down on progressive ideology, but to replace our current political ideology of liberal progressivism with a rediscovery of a muscular Christian faith that has defeated Islamic radicalism before. We Christians have defeated Islamic radicalism not once, not twice, but three times. Three times we have thrust the jihadis back upon their own swords. Three times we have sent their armies into retreat. And multiple times we have liberated lands that the jihadis and the Islamists have sought to conquer. The political ideology that is currently governing Europe is a weak failure that cannot stand up to radical Islamism because it is ideologically blind to identify the cause of the problem. We Christians suffer from no such ideological weakness. We are able to name the cause of Islamic radicalism. The cause is the teachings of the Quran and the example of Muhammad. And the answer to this problem is for a robust Christian culture to dominate the politics, economics and society of our lands and to make it impossible for their ideology to prosper unchallenged. We need to introduce laws. Sister, if you have a question, I'll take questions at the end. At the end, at the end. We need to introduce laws necessary to make the price of following Islamic radicalism too high to bear. These, pro these sentences should include banishment from the realm, loss of your children, loss of your businesses, loss of your homes, loss of access to state institutions, and to make you an outlaw in the land. What does it mean to be an outlaw? Everyone thinks that an outlaw is someone like Billy the Kid. He was never an outlaw. He was always someone who broke the law. The concept of outlaw means that if you are declared an outlaw, then anyone can do anything to you and the law will not protect you. Anyone who is found guilty of Islamic radicalism should be declared an outlaw, banished from the kingdom, banished from the land. And if vigilantes or others should do things to them because they have been declared a legal outlaw, they should suffer because of their status as an outlaw. Currently, the present system of government, because of its ideological weakness, treats Islamic radicalism as merely the actions of independent actors who are simply criminal. They will not accept that they are motivated by a religious ideology that means that they do not see that there is a consequence too high to pay because they believe 
that they will be rewarded with heaven. Such an ideology can only be defeated with an ideology that is as equally strong in its existential character. And that ideology is a muscular Christian faith that will pass the laws and identify the problem for what it is. Now I want to be clear. I don't want to be heard or understood as encouraging vigilantism. I don't believe in vigilantism. I believe in a process of law. And I believe that Islamic radicals should be subject to a law and that the consequence of being defined legally as an Islamic radical is that you be made an outlaw. And an outlaw does not have the protection of legal institutions like the police or the courts. These groups should also have their children taken off them and their children should be fostered to Jewish and Christian families. It is only when the price of following Islamic radicalism become so unbearably high that only those who are clinically insane would ever be convinced to follow it. The reason why Islamists are not intimidated by liberal progressives is because liberal progressive ideology is not intimidating at all. They want to pander to the Islamists, bend to the Islamists. They even side with the Islamists, like so many do in the media. Because the progressives and the Islamists are united by a common hatred of Western civilization. Western civilization was built upon Christianity. And it is only when we rediscover a confidence and a courage and a conviction and a commitment to that Christian heritage that we will ever be in the place to name the problem, identify the problem, and then pass the necessary legal solutions to deal with the problem. Any questions? So in what way do liberals side with Islamists? Let me explain the process by which liberal progressives side with Islamists. Liberal progressives conflate two categories that are not the same. They conflate ethnicity and religion. And they deem challenges to Islam, political Islam in particular, as racism. And then they try to silence resistance to political Islam in any means that is not congruent with liberal progressive thought. But the problem with liberal progressive thought is it believes that everyone should be treated as individuals. When Islamic political Islam cultivates group mentality and, sh um, and herd mentality and herd action, and you need to deal with it like that. Does that answer your question? Any other questions before I move on? Okay. <laughs>